Hey guys, you may have noticed that I've given myself a haircut. Now can I say desperate times call for desperate measures and I was overdue. In this video I'm going to show you how to make a walnut maple end grain cutting board. If you take the time and you've got the patience to sand it, you'll love it. This video has got tons of little tips like how to fix small chips and dings in your work, how to minimize dust control in your shop, and how to save your planer blades over time. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, we've got tons of videos coming, so let's get into it. Let's test out to see how this uh, DeWalt cordless seven and a quarter inch blade works on some uh, four quarter, four quarter by seven and a quarter maple. So this is going to be a nice test for this uh, for this saw. It's a six amp battery hour. It's full charge. So let's give her a go. like butter. Let's do the same thing with this eight quarter by eight and three quarter inch walnut. The thickness will be this minus a hair, so one and seven eighths minus, I don't know, call it a sixteenth of an inch uh, after planing. Um, so let's cut it at two inches. Something that's very important is to make sure your blade is square, 100% square. It'll make all the difference. So if you don't have a fancy digital calibration tool. You just use your speed square and raise your blade all the way up and mine is off just a hair. So I'm going to go ahead and now that we know it's true, we can go ahead and rip everything. We got our walnut and our maple. Do something like like this. So we're gonna do a glue up like this, and then we're gonna cut it, and we're gonna flip it. We're gonna do an end grain. Um, I would like to alternate. But I don't think we will. All right, let's try this new toy out. I haven't tried it yet. Excellent finish, but very messy. And it's, I think it's a little too much sawdust for my uh, dust deputy, Cyclone, my Cyclone uh, dust collection with the vacuum. This guy here. 
There he is. Either that or it's full, but I think I, I just emptied it, so it shouldn't be full. So anyway, let's keep going. is so we're gonna glue this up and we're going to cross cut it tomorrow so we'll clean up all the dust off these guys because if that gets in your glue up not good. <clears throat> It's been 24 hours. Let's take this baby apart. I like to use a uh, five in one tool. Just scrape that off. So let's give it a quick pass to the belt sander, clean it up, and uh, we'll run it through the planer again. I'd like to, uh, I like to just kind of clamp it in place, but not clamp the actual workpiece, but just kind of pinch it between two clamps, just to keep it from wandering. It's usually all you need. So clamp that in, snug it up nice and tight. I'll put a block, a stop block, and I put that piece underneath temporarily so that if there's a buildup of dust, then it won't, um, yeah, the buildup of dust won't, won't uh, what am I trying to say here? The buildup of dust won't get caught up and skew my measurement. My math was off. Save that for the next one. Be 
I'm going to do it the opposite way. I'm going to push this guy out so I can cut some out. He, I know it's going to cause me grief, but anyway. That's a future me problem. So it's going to end up looking something like this. There we go. Okay, I like it. Alright, so it's been about 24 hours. Let's uh, take this baby apart. So I did clean up the top side quite a bit, um, but the bottom, I had some drips that came through, so I'm going to clean that up. Alright, planer time. Since I just got this planer, so since it's new to me and my dust collection system isn't the greatest, um, I've had to duct tape this pipe to the machine because I don't have the adapter for it. But it'll do for now. It'll do. This thing here is great. It's a tool actuated power, so when you set it to auto, um, the tool will turn on the dust collection system and it all runs automatically. Um, I'll put the link in the description for this guy. I can't remember what it's worth, but it's worth every penny. It's a great little tool. All right, let's run this piece through the planer a few times. So I'm setting it up. I can, there's a gauge here, a removal gauge that you can't see on the camera. Um, it tells me exactly how much I'll be removing. There, let me get you a close up. So. When I don't have the material in there, there's a little a little gauge. So when you push it through, it tells me exactly how much is gonna come off. And right there, it's about a 16th of an inch. So I'm gonna drop it down. I just wanna take a, a 32nd of an inch off. We'll just go nice and easy. So let's do that, we'll run it through. here I got a bit of tear out and on, that's a uh, on the back side but you know what that's all gonna get chamfered out so I'm not too worried about that that's the worst of it really and I got that's gonna be fun I'm not really we'll see how that turns out but you've got my you've got the planer marks on there which is fine it's not too deep but it's nice and flat and the bottom side is nice and smooth so let's put the planer away <laughs> So we'll fire this thing up. We'll start off with some 100 grit sandpaper. We'll work all the planer marks out of it. And uh, then we'll go down to some, uh, what do I got there? Some 220. And once we do the 220, then we'll, we'll, get, it to, we'll get it to a near finished surface. And then we'll, um, we'll soak the board. We'll not soak it, we'll wet it, raise the grain. And uh, we'll do it again. Joint. 
This looks pretty dry. We'll see what it looks like. Well, it is dry. We'll see what it looks like once I sand it. These are dry too, so. All right, so that Ed, <clears throat> that corner turned out pretty good. And uh, so there's the edge, it's all filled. And the top is filled too, so it, I'm pretty happy with it. And once I chamfer that edge, you won't even see that. So now we're gonna cut some finger wells on the short side, just a little 45 miter on the uh, table saw. So we'll cut that, sand that, and... time to raise the grain so let's do it finally so I like to uh, put some coconut milk on there to raise the grain <laughs> just water It's a diuretic. Yeah, it's, a la it's an odorless laxative. So, um, cutting on the cutting board will keep you regular. Bonus. No, it just seals it up. So, give it a deep douse with this stuff, and then we'll go over it with honeybees. So, this is a combination of mineral oil and what do they say here? Uh, beeswax and food grade mineral oil. So, combo with this and some beeswax. So, it's just a nice protect it and it really makes the grain pop so looking forward to this step is the best part so I'm gonna champ for the corners on the cutting board so I'm gonna need a sanding block so usually I'll use like a piece of white melamine and I do have tons of it but they're all full sheets and I need a bit of a little piece so I'm going to use the this is almost like a woodworking no-no uh, yeah maybe I won't I need something flat Got a nice piece of uh, Baltic birch here. I'm just going to use a little piece for a uh, for a sanding block. So let's, I'm going to cut that up. Usually I uh, two-way tape some uh, sandpaper to them to it. And usually, like my sanding blocks are usually full length, but I don't have any two-way tape right now. So this will work. And uh, what I'll do is I'm just going to cut. A piece of sandpaper the same width as my block so you know roughly the same width and I'm going to I'm just gonna tape it that's twice today the duct tape saves me oh well, it's just gonna give me a nice flat piece to chamfer the edges so this is this is almost dry, but the edges are fine. So I like a chamfer versus a round over with the uh, router. So let's uh, chamfer these edges. So you, we've given this a micro chamfer. It's just a nice light, if I can get this to focus properly. I don't know if you can tell, but it's got a nice break in the corner. These finger wells on the bottom. It's perfect to grab. This little defect turned out not too bad. Not too bad at all. But uh, let's go put a clear coat on it.
So the last step is to put these feet on. I've polished the, the cutting board. Now I've got these little feet that I'm going to put on on the bottom. I've already pre-measured from the corners. So we're definitely going to want to drill pilot holes because this is hardwood. Uh, if you put a screw into hardwood, you're probably going to twist the head off or snap something. So always good to pre-drill hardwood. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. 